Well, good morning, church, and today we are closing out the book of Jonah, where we just read he, he threw a tantrum kind of again over the fact that this hill he's sitting on, where he's wanting to watch Nineveh be destroyed, this God allows this plant to grow and Jonah loves it, and then God allows for the plant to die, and Jonah gets angry and says, man, I'd rather die. And as we talked about yesterday, he's free to leave. God's not making him sit there. But we're going to see how God responds to him after Jonah says, yes, I'm angry enough to die. Like, I, yes, it, I should be angry over this plant. It tells us in verse 10, And the Lord said, You cared about the plant, which you did not labor over and did not grow. It appeared in a night and perished in a night. So may I not care about the great city of Nineveh, which has more than 120,000 people who cannot distinguish between their right and their left, as well as many animals. God's like, that plant, you did nothing to help it grow. You, it showed up, it was here for like a day, and yet you're this worked up over it. Why am I not allowed to care about the 120,000 people who just don't know any better at the end of the day? And he even says, and all their animals, as if like he just gives up, Jonah's not going to care about the people. But what about all the animals in the city? And the bottom line is, how much more should God care about these people, these human souls that are on the wrong path, that, that when they finally turn around, why would he? It doesn't make sense for what Jonah's asking for. Now, what's interesting about the book of Jonah is that, that I just read the last verse. It ends with that question. We don't know if Jonah goes and, and apologizes to God and repents like, you're right, I'm sorry. We don't know if he sits there and dies on that hill because he's sitting there waiting forever for them to be wiped out and it never happens. We have no idea. But I think what's important for us is it does kind of leave us with the challenge. What would we do? If we were in Jonah's position, how would we respond? I think most of us would like to think we'd respond in a more mature way than Jonah most likely did, although we, again, we don't know. When the reality is we're a lot like Jonah more than we'd like to admit. I think what's interesting about the whole book of Jonah is when you look at how people respond to God, everyone but Jonah seemingly gets it right. You have the people of Nineveh, they hear their sin, they repent. You have the sailors, they have this stuff going on, they pray to God, cry out to him, they try not to throw Jonah over. These are all people that it wouldn't have made as much sense as the prophet of God. Yet this is who we see acting, what many of us would say is immature at best. And so I just want that to be a challenge to us. May we never treat anyone in that way. May we always respond to God in, in the way that we should, which is to turn to Him, to pray to Him, cry out to Him when tr troubles come, to be obedient to Him, not try to hide something from Him as if He's not going to see it. Obviously, just like Jonah found out, God will see us regardless of where we're at. But may we always seek after what He wants and try to have the heart He has for people so that we can share His hope with those that we come into contact with. I'm excited to hear from Pastor Brandon and what our next series is going to be. It'll be a surprise for you. We'll see you next week.